Hello! Battery cell balancing is an important feature that in EUCs takes place directly in the battery management system BMS, which is located inside the battery casing. There are always small variations in individual battery cell capacities and internal resistances. So when charging and discharging enough times, the voltages of the series cell groups drift off a bit. And when they drift apart enough, the battery pack no longer charges up to its full original voltage. It can also damage the low voltage cells if the voltage difference is large enough to drop a cell group below 2.5 volts. At that point the battery should never be used again since it has become a much greater fire risk. So how is this problem solved? The BMSs have a cell balancing feature which drains the excess voltage of the individual cell groups. But in all EUCs except the S22 and V13, this only happens when the high voltage cell groups go above 4.2 volts. So you need to charge the battery to full for it to happen, and preferably leave the charger connected for an hour or two even after the charger LED turns green. Although it's difficult to confirm whether the extra hour does much, but it hasn't harmed my batteries and I do it every single time I charge my wheel. If you only charge to 80% in hopes to lengthen the battery lifetime, the cells never get balanced and your battery pack can be useless at like 2000 kilometers. I have a separate video on 80% charging. In Begode wheels, the balancing resistors are organized neatly in an easily recognizable single row of surface mount resistors. A few years ago, some people opened up an in-motion battery pack and noticed that a similar section of components does not exist. Then they asked in-motion email support whether there is balancing in their wheels. I don't know what kind of wording they used, but for some reason in motion answered that there is not. This event has been followed by several heated arguments online whether there is actually balancing or not, and whether all in motions are useless wheels because there is no balancing. I hate false information, so I have done my best to get to the bottom of this. 1. People who never charge to full have a huge risk of ruining the battery as soon as a few thousand kilometers. There are numerous discussions at the EUC forum where people who have never charged to full ask for help because their batteries no longer charge past 76% or some other random value. So it's clear that without balancing, the batteries will probably die pretty soon. Now, if in-motions do not have a balancing function, but there are a large amount of in-motions around that have been ridden way past 10,000 km, where are all the posts about these expensive battery failures that should be pretty common if they don't have cell balancing? They are nowhere. They don't exist. There are a few rare battery failures with new batteries, but they can't have anything to do with the voltages drifting off over time. So these issues just don't exist. 2. I measured all cells on my V11 after 4000 km. The result? They were all closer to each other than what my multimeter can measure. 0.01 volts. The probability of having 80 perfectly matched cells still after 4000 km is so microscopically tiny that one can pretty safely say that it's not possible without a cell balancing function. I have ridden the batteries to full empty many times. Sometimes I have even ridden the tilt back for a few kilometers to get back home. So it's not like I'm babying the battery. 3. If you notice immediately when your wheel no longer charges to full original voltage, you might still get the batteries salvaged. You charge to full, disconnect the charger, wait for 30 minutes for the balancing resistors to drain the high voltage cells back to 4.2 volts, and then you connect the charger again. If it starts charging, repeat that procedure a few times. If it doesn't charge, you can try going for a very short ride and then try again. This method has salvaged at least a few 
V10F wheels and they have started to charge up to full again. If there were no balancing function, this method wouldn't have worked, it wouldn't do anything, but it did. 4. Chinese people often use translators for communicating with the West, and my guess is that a short question that contains common words like balancing that have a special meaning in this specific context do not go through very well. We are balancing left to right on our self-balancing wheels because it has a balancing effect in our daily lives. Same word, many meanings. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Chinese use a completely different word for battery cell voltage balancing. Because of this, I wanted to ask them as well, but a bit differently. Instead of just asking about balancing, I described what the function does. Then I asked whether the V11 and V12 have this function. The answer was... Ta-da! Five. Super Curio from EUC Forum also asked in motion. The answer to him was this. Ta-da! Six. InMotion has manufactured battery-powered vehicles for about a decade. They have sold at least a few dozen thousand units of them. There is a slight chance that they know something about what they are doing. Yes, they have made mistakes, but generally all their vehicles have thousands of good and successful decisions in them. For them not to include balancing with these large batteries would be absolutely bonkers. And I don't believe that one of the most advanced EUC manufacturers would be bonkers. It just doesn't make sense. If we look at the V11 BMS, there isn't an obvious row of 20 resistors anywhere, but there are smaller rows of 1 kilo ohm resistors, more than 20 actually. And there are these two integrated circuits that have 20 pins each, and a third one that has something like 40 pins in it. These kind of integrated circuits are not usually visible in begode wheels, for example. So why does InMotion BMS have these? The function of these circuits can be pretty much anything. Why wouldn't these be the balancing resistors and the balancing network? It's just that it doesn't look identical to the begode one. But the orientation of the components is irrelevant. The circuit can still have exactly the same function. So people not seeing the same row of components that Begode has is irrelevant as well. It only tells us how little they know about electronic circuits. And of course, an exact circuit diagram is always needed to be able to say exactly what a circuit can or can't do. But since we'll never see one for any commercial product, we are stuck at counting the resistors. Here's the V10F BMS. We have three tidy groups of five 1K resistors and more than five in the upper row. More than 20 in total, perfectly suitable for being the bleeding resistors for voltage balancing. And here's a V8S BMS. This one's easy. There are 20 tidy groups consisting of a 1K resistor, a capacitor and a diode. They are even laid out practically the same as on a typical bigode BMS. And here's the BMS for V8 and V8F. There are 10 resistor-capacitor pairs on the left and two groups of five resistors on the right. Again, all 1K resistors, just like in all the other InMotion BMSs. There's no reason why these couldn't be the balancing circuit. Adam Wrongway said that not having cell balancing in InMotion wheels before V13 is a deal breaker to him. And it would absolutely be to me too. But like he said, this is such a basic feature and a no-brainer to have in an EUC. And I fully agree with that too. But like I have explained in this video, his base assumptions about all in motions before V13 not having cell balancing, it's simply wrong. And frankly, spreading this rumor with his high profile YouTube account is quite cruel to be honest. There's absolutely no reason to believe that InMotion wheels wouldn't have cell balancing. 
Time to kill this rumor, guys.